Does it seem like crime is out of control in St. Louis? Every day it's either a carjacking, shooting, or a murder on the news. One St. Louis city leader thinks he has a plan that could actually do something about crime in our city. It's called the Ceasefire Project. It's worked in other places like Boston, Detroit, and New Orleans. So we sent our Casey Nolan to the now former murder capital of the country to investigate in tonight's crime in the 314. When a lot of people think about New Orleans, this is the image that comes to mind. Of course, just like St. Louis is more than baseball, New Orleans is more than Bourbon Street. Also, like St. Louis, a lot of people think the city is dangerous. But the city of New Orleans says it's turned a corner on violent crime. So we're here to answer two questions. Did they? And can we copy it? Come here as a tourist, and there's plenty to see, taste, and hear. Thank you. And a good chance you'll feel safe. And welcome. But get away from the attractions and the wealth, and you can find a sinful side of New Orleans that the city doesn't want to sell. A neighborhood with a lot of violence, a lot of drugs, a lot of poverty. This is the part of New Orleans known as Central City, often where the city has the most gun violence and murders. I've, I've been involved in a lot of funerals, a lot of uh, prayer vigils. With his building partially behind barbed wire, Pastor Jamal Weathersby says New Hope Baptist is out in this neighborhood, trying to stop the shootings and killings. This was ground zero in 2011, when New Orleans was the murder capital of the country for at least the sixth straight year. I personally officiated and did the eulogy for three brothers who were murdered at the same time. Every day we had two, three shootings. It was like nonstop. In 2011, the city's new crime commissioner was working in the prosecutor's office. You know, you had that thought process like, what in the world is going on? New Orleans? needed answers. Are we ever going to bounce back from this? Are we ever going to get straight? City leaders took a leap of faith and turned to a Department of Justice backed program called the Ceasefire Project. First, that meant a drastic change in consequences for criminals. A partnership with federal prosecutors sent the most violent offenders to federal prison. The city targeted the most dangerous neighborhood, Central City. Arrests were made, and word got out. It's a different story when you're actually in federal court facing a federal judge and like I don't need to go to trial, I'm just going to plead guilty. And some of the guys are actually doing, going to be serving a life sentence. So that word spreads, it gets out, and it enacts a, a deterrent. Absolutely. And there's another vital part of ceasefire that we can't show because the men doing the work say it's too dangerous to be seen on camera. A group of about 15 former criminals embedded in the community laser focused on one goal, stop shootings and killings. They were in Central City every day. They brought enemies together, often over a meal, to de-escalate arguments before they turned violent. They were in emergency rooms, talking shooting victims out of retaliation, reminding them they could end up in federal prison. Did it work? It worked. And the stats showed it. In the first full year of the ceasefire project, murders in Central City dropped by more than 40%. New Orleans is no longer the murder capital of the U.S. But city leaders say they can do better, and St. Louis can learn from their mistakes. I think if it had expanded and it was in more districts along the city, you would have had a better outcome. Instead of focusing on just one neighborhood, they're expanding the program to the entire city. They're changing the name to Cure Violence to give it less association with policing and more credibility on the street and bringing the health department in to help run it. Treating violent crime like a public health issue and all the social problems that come with it and can cause it. We've got to help this particular neighborhood or these individuals for the betterment of the whole town. Absolutely. So there's hope because I think a lot of people... Oh, say, it's hope. We, we got this. Do you put any stock in plans coming from City Hall? Absolutely, because I believe it, that everybody plays a part. Back at New Hope, Pastor Weathersby says his church will keep doing its part from meals to drug treatment programs. We make it a point to walk the beat, to walk the street, to shake hands with people, to hug people. Because too much is at risk to not reach out. It, it always has to be our focus because if we don't, we'll look up and we'll be in the same uh, condition that we were in when we were the murder capital. So, can this same plan do for St. Louis what it did for New Orleans? 
Lewis Reed, the president of the Board of Alderman, Alderman believes it can. Last month, he put in a formal request with the mayor's office and public safety department to move forward with the ceasefire project. But so far, more than a month later, nothing has happened. For this story, the mayor's office had no comment. So we're not hearing anything from the mayor? Is there a riff there? That's hard to say. I would, uh, I would hesitate to, to guess. I, I do know the, the president's uh, office talked to the public safety director who reports to the mayor, so, but the mayor's office has no comment. You know, there we, when we were in New Orleans, Mike and Ann, I kept thinking, gosh, we've learned so much, more than you can put in one report. I wish someone with some authority from St. Louis were here to hear this. If they have or if they plan to, they haven't Seems told like us. Seems like some pretty good lessons. Absolutely. It's not a magic bullet. They still have crime, obviously, but they have certainly, uh, well, they've won over that pastor who's on the ground. He, he is cautiously optimistic. And that crime commissioner that you were talking to, one of the things she said kind of flies in the face of what we're already doing here in St. Louis with Hayden's Triangle and focusing on one place. And she just said that was her one regret, that they focused on Central City right. and they should have focused on multiple places at the same time. Which is what they're doing now. I mean, hey, they learned it the hard way. They, they're not bragging, but absolutely they say, if you're going to do something like this, you got to attack the whole city at the same time. And it's not just arrest, as they said, it's a public health issue for them. All right, All right. thanks Casey. In addition to the carjacking crisis, we will be tracking the ceasefire project and adding it to that list of five follows. We'll continue to update you as we get answers.